Sevi. Now that Ningguang is back on this banner, and it seems Geo is going to be back in the spotlight in the next patch with new Geo characters and comps, I thought it's time to make an updated guide for her. We're going to go over her talents and constellations, how to maximize her DPS role, and the best builds and team comp recommendations. If you just recently pulled Ningguang or are looking to build her, then congrats! She's a very solid character whose kit is relatively easy to learn. So let's get started. The main thing I appreciate about Ningguang is that she's great as both a main DPS and in a quick swap team. Her kit is also one of the easiest to understand as it's mostly about throwing as many rocks as you can at your enemies. It's a simple, well-developed kit that pays off impressively for a 4-star. In fact, she's received an honorary title of the secret 5-star, which I think is well-deserved. Now let's take a look at her kit and discuss how she works and how you can maximize her potential. As a main DPS, you will be using a lot of Ningguang's auto attacks while on the field and waiting for her skill and burst to be up. Let's take a closer look at how to best use these. Every time her normal attack hits its target, she obtains a Star Jade. You'll see it floating behind her, and you can accumulate 3 Star Jades maximum at C0. Ningguang's charge attack will then throw all of the Star Jades accumulated to deal additional damage. Her normal attack multiplier is low, although it hits twice and gets better at C1. But it's her charged attacks you want to take advantage of because of its higher multiplier and added star jades. Unlike other characters, she doesn't have an attack string that builds up damage. As you can see from the talent details, it's just her normal attack with one damage multiplier, then her charged attack. So Ningguang's attack rotation will be something like one normal, then charged, or two normals, then charged. So you might be thinking, why not three normals to get all three star jades, then charged attack? Well, that's perfectly fine too, but since her charged attack multiplier scaling is so much higher than her normals, you could potentially deal more damage the faster and more often you use her charged attacks. Still, that's a bit nitpicky already. Any of those rotations are completely usable. Just make sure to use her charged attack when you have the maximum star jades. You also don't have to worry too much about stamina consumption because Ningguang has a passive talent that removes your charged attack stamina consumption if she possesses Star Jades. It's also important to note that Ningguang's normal attacks have a slight animation problem. If you simply stand still and click your attack button, your animation speed is quite slow. To solve this, all you need to do is a simple trick called walk cancelling. Walk cancelling Ningguang is probably the most essential thing to know and learn if you want to main her. Comparing side by side, you can see how her attack string is significantly faster just by pressing W or walking forward while you're tapping the attack button. This way, you can string your normal attacks more smoothly and accumulate star jades faster. Ningguang's skill, which summons a jade screen, has a couple of functions that add to her DPS role and offer some support utility. You just have to be conscious of where you place it though. If it interferes with another geo structure or a large enemy, it will break right away. Her screen deals AoE damage when it's summoned, and when her last passive talent is unlocked, the screen will provide a 12% geo damage bonus to characters who walk through it. It's useful for geo comps since you can just stay around it and keep walking back and forth as you switch characters. It's also counted as a geo structure and can resonate with Zhongli's pillar. If Ito and Goru have talents that also take advantage of geo structures, then her jade screen will be even more useful. You can't climb it, unfortunately, but it can block enemy projectiles like arrows. In the good old days of Abyss's Floor 11 monolith, I used her jade screen to protect it. Finally, Ningguang's burst is what generally makes her busted. It only has a 12 second cooldown and a 40 energy cost, making it easy to rotate in a quick swap team and easy to use with her as a main DPS. Just be aware that you want to place Ningguang's screen before her burst since the jade screen adds projectiles too. So how would her burst DPS rotation go? Well, you would want her jade screen on the field first, have Ningguang walk through it for the geo damage bonus, cast her burst, and if she's on C6, perform her charged attack. One big don't from experience is to unleash her burst in enclosed spaces like corners or caves or right in front of geo structures. The projectiles will collide with those instead of the enemies. The talent level priority is her burst, then her normal attacks, then her skill. That's pretty much her kit. 
simple, straightforward, and once you get used to the pattern, she's very easy to use. Though her kit is decent at C0, she really shines with her constellations. Let's go through them one by one. I think that C1 is a significant step to unlocking her potential as a main DPS since it gives her normal attacks AoE damage, but the enemies have to be really clumped together. It makes her great against mobs and even better if you have crowd controlling characters like Venti or Mona. C2 resets the cooldown of her skill if the Jade screen breaks, which actually benefits her in a few ways. It helps ensure that your Jade screen is almost always up, so your Geo characters can get the Geo buff reliably. It lets her potentially deal skill damage twice in a row if the first Jade screen was destroyed right away or if you break it when casting her burst. Basically, C2 will ensure that your Jade screen is up when you use her burst. Again, remember that the shield will also fire additional projectiles along with Ningguang's burst, so it's a significant loss if you don't have it up when you use her burst. C3 increases your burst talent level, which of course just makes Ningguang's burst even more deadly. C4 is probably her least relevant constellation, but it's still a good buff to have for your team to receive less damage. It also helps with Ning Wang's survivability, which is very much needed. C5 increases her Jade screen damage. It's something, especially since you can trigger her skill twice in a row with C2 now. And finally, C6 is when she becomes monstrous. After she casts her burst, Ning Wang gains 7 star jades, much like how her normal attacks accumulate star jades to use for her charged attack. But you can only get a maximum of 3 star jades that way. Her C6 now lets her have 7 right after her burst. So the idea is that after using her burst, you follow up with a charged attack. If you're successful, you'll see all those beautiful geo damage numbers explode. For artifact choices, go with artifacts that enhance her overall DPS capabilities. Let's start with artifacts for low AR players. It's a combination of the following. Martial Artist, Berserker, Braveheart, and Resolution of Sojourner. These sets are good in their 2-piece combinations, but their 4-piece bonuses are also useful for Ningguang. For high AR artifacts, these are your choices. 2-piece Archaic Petra, 2-piece Gladiators or Shimanawa, or 2-piece Noblesse. My priority recommendation is Noblesse since she gets a lot of damage from her burst. The other 2-piece choice will depend on which of your artifacts have better substats. I'm currently running her on a 2-piece Glad 2-piece Noblesse simply because my Glad pieces are great. If you do want to min-max her, a 2-piece Archaic Petra might be more preferable as long as you get better substats. The weapon choice can also influence your set choice. If you have weapons that add elemental damage bonus like Lost Prayers, then balancing her attack stats with a 2-piece Glad might be better. However, keep in mind as well that she has a low base attack. If you also give her a weapon with a low base attack, then having a Glad Shimanawa set might not yield good returns compared to a 5-star weapon since it's scaling from a low attack stat to start with. If you also pair her with Bennett or Sara for an attack buff, then Archaic Petra might be more preferable. For full sets, you can go with a 4-piece retracing bolide, though its disadvantage is that it buffs only her normal and charged attacks, when Ning Guang's biggest damage source is her burst. It's also why I wouldn't recommend using Shimanawa, because while it supercharges her auto attacks, it hurts her energy cost. In theory, they both could work, but it doesn't play to her best strengths, and it's already hard farming for a full set as it is. Since I rely on Ning Guang's burst a lot, I want to set that buff set too. For artifact stats, it's very straightforward. Get a crit rate or crit damage circlet depending on what you need more, then a geo damage goblet and attack percent sands. Aim for at least a 50 to 100 crit ratio. On my Ningguang build, I have 50 to 150, which I'm very satisfied with. For substats, you'll want the usual DPS substats of crit, attack percent, and ER. For her energy recharge, since her burst cost is only 40, you can get away with just having 120-130% to 130 energy recharge. Mine's just at 120% and I can say it's more than enough for me to spam her burst as long as you have another Geo battery on your team. Now let's check out her best weapons. For early AR players, you can start her off with a Twin Nephrite which gives crit rate, movement speed, and attack percent bonuses, all of which are valuable for Ning Guang. 
For free to plays, the best option is the Dodoko Tales if you are able to get it because it synergizes well with her to provide normal charge damage and attack percent bonuses. If not, then the next best option is the Black Cliff Agate, which then makes her crit stats easier to build if you can save up for it in the Star Glitter Shop. If you're an early AR player, you could use Prototype Amber on Ningguang. It refunds energy, making it easy to spam her burst if you don't have high level artifacts yet. It will also give your team some healing, which is valuable in early to mid game. If you're a battle pass spender, then Solar Pearl is easily her best in slot 4 star. If you're really committed to Ningguang and are willing to pay, this is the best choice, and it easily wins in the drip department. Also, did you notice her constellation looks like the Solar Pearl? For gacha choices, the best picks are Widsis, especially for quick swap. Although there's a 1 in 3 chance you'll get the EM buff stronger shields, I guess? But the other two buffs and crit damage substat are hard to pass up. The Eye of Perception, especially with some refinements, has a decent passive. If you're using Ningguang as a burst DPS, you can also time the Eye of Perception passive to go in between your bursts. Then there's Wine and Song. This hasn't been seen on a banner in a while, but if you happen to have one, it's usable for Ningguang, but only barely. You'll just want to avoid any ER substats alongside it. Finally, for 5-star options, any 5-star will be amazing on her except for Everlasting Moonglow. Lost Prayers has the advantage of fixing your crit stats right away, while the Skyward Atlas and Memory of Dust will only be good if you can supplement them with proper crit stats from your artifacts. Now for team comps, Ningguang can take advantage of attack buffs from Bennett or Sara of course, but being a Geo character that doesn't offer any amplifying reactions and whose crystallized reaction is mainly defensive, her reaction potential is limited. So aside from buffers, her best teammates are really Geo characters and shielders. With another Geo character, you can battery each other and give you Geo resonance, which lowers resistance of enemies. This is the best alternative since the Viridescent Venerer effect doesn't apply to Geo. Shields are essential for Ningguang, especially as a main DPS because she's quite squishy. If you have Zhongli or a well-built Noel, then great. But if your other Geo characters are limited to Albedo or Traveler, I would recommend running a double Pyro double Geo team for Pyro Resonance, Geo Resonance, and so your crystallized reactions have something to react with. Crowd control teammates would also highly benefit Ningguang since at C1, her projectiles deal AoE. So clumping your enemies together would bring some very high and consistent damage. Ideally, these would be characters like Venti, Kazuha, Animal Traveler, or Mona. Ningguang can also of course work well with your regular 4-star off-field DPSs like Fischl, Singchu, Beidou, and Shangling. And for cheap Geo Resonance, Noelle is there too. So everyone, that's my updated and comprehensive guide on Ningguang. As of now, her kit is pretty timeless. No recent artifacts or weapons have radically changed her power level or potential, and while I would love to see Mihoyo give her some attention, she has always been a solid unit and will continue to remain that way. And I'm beyond excited to see Geo back in the spotlight again in the next patch. So what about you? Are you an aspiring or veteran Ningguang main? As always, if you have any questions or advice to add, leave it in the comments below. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and turn on that notification bell button for more guides, discussions, and helpful videos for Genshin Impact. I will see you soon. Take care!